A few weeks ago, I attempted to reinstall my second outdoor grow tower in hopes that some warm spring weather was soon to be upon us. During this attempt, I soon learned that the bottom of the, this tower was leaking. A closer inspection showed that the leak was coming from this section, which I had previously repaired. Although I had laid a lot of epoxy to secure the repair, it still was not strong enough to keep the bottom of the tower from leaking. Instead of trying to repair it again, I decided that this was a good opportunity to build a new tower so that I could show you how quick and easy it is to build your own. To build a new tower, the first thing I needed was an 8 foot 5 by 5 inch vinyl fence post. The next step is to cut this 3 inch wide PVC pipe which we use as the net cup holders. The best way to do these cuts is to use a chop saw. Then I'm going to set my chop saw at 30 degrees. Now I will line up the blade and pipe so that there is about 1 quarter inch left uncut. I clamped a small piece of wood to this, the saw fence so that all my pieces are exactly the same size. Now I make my first test cut. The 30 degree angle I just cut is slightly different than the 45 degree angle I used on my previous power builds. I did this purposely so that the net cup holders would not stick out so far and the tower would have a sleeker look. And now we'll continue to rapidly cut 20 more of these. Here are a few tips when cutting PVC with a chop saw. First, if you don't have a vacuum attachment for your chop saw, make sure you cut PVC outdoors. And wear a mask. The white plastic dust goes everywhere and you don't want to breathe it in or track it inside of your house. Also, be sure to go slow with your cuts and let the saw do the work. Also, as you can see, you have to switch the cut angle between 0 degrees and 30 degrees between each cut. In all, it took about 10 minutes to make all these cuts. It actually took me longer to set up the saw and guide than it took to cut. I will also measure and mark how much I will cut off the top of the post to bring it down from 8 foot to around 7 foot. Then, starting at the line I marked for the first net cup holder, I will mark 5 more lines 10 inches apart, after which I will trace the inside of the PVC net cup holder onto the fence post so that I now know where to drill. Now I will lay out all 6 PVC cuttings to double check the position and measurements. To cut the fence post to the correct height, I will use a circular saw. If you don't have one, you can also use a hacksaw or a reciprocating saw. To make sure that my cut stays square, I will clamp my triangle to the post to use as a guide. After the first cut, you will have to repeat the process until you cut all four sides. For the next step, I will drill holes in the fence post using a 3 inch hole saw blade. I recommend using an electric drill for this. When drilling holes in hard vinyl like this, do not apply too much pressure. Allow the drill to do the work with a bit of jam. In addition, I've learned that it will be easier to move the cut out from the hole saw blade if you don't push so hard. After drilling the first six holes, rotate the post and drill the next six. Again, notice that I stagger the holes mid-center between the opposing side, then turn the post and drill the remaining holes on each side. The next step in this process will be to glue the net cup holders to the fence post. I found that clear Gorilla Glue epoxy works best because vinyl fence glue won't stick to PVC plastic and PVC cement won't stick to vinyl. Make sure your net cup holder is straight and that no part of the hole you drilled is being covered. Don't worry if the net cup holder doesn't sit completely flat on the fence post. We will take care of that later. Then continue the same process until all the net cup holders on the side of the tower are glued. After which I place a 2x4 on top to help better bond the epoxy. After 2-3 to three hours the epoxy should be dry enough for you to rotate the towers and glue the next set of net cups using the same process as before. Here is one of the net cups I glued on the first side. If you look carefully you will see some spaces where the net cup holder did not adhere tightly to the vinyl. To correct this, I begin by adding a light bead of epoxy on one side of the PVC net cup holder. You don't need that much epoxy. It will run down the remaining way and seal all the cracks. Make sure you put carbon down on your floor to catch the epoxy that will drip. After two more hours, you are ready to rotate the post again and continue with the same process. After you glue all four sets of the net cup holders to the post, continue to apply epoxy to the other side of the net cup holders that did not get filled on the first rotation. To remove these epoxy drips, simply use your fingernail and peel them off. Up next, we will need to make a drip cap which will allow the nutrient-rich water to steadily flow down the length of the, the tower. To do this, I first purchased a 4-inch PVC cap from Lowe's. Then I will drill a hole in the center of the cap as a guide point. Next, I will divide the cap into quadrants and mark the holes in a pyramid formation. Then I use an eighth of an inch bit to drill holes just as I marked. Here you can see how it looks from the inside of the cap. Now let's mark, drill, and glue the part that will allow you to attach the drip cap to the irrigation. For this, I will use a half-inch PVC female to slip adapter. Here I am drilling a half-inch hole. 
Since PVC pipe is measured by the inside diameter, I need to expand the hole size by a quarter inch using a step trim bit. Now I will add a small amount of epoxy to hold the adapter in place. Then I will clamp it and allow the epoxy to dry overnight. Up next is the irrigation feed line that will connect the pump to the drip cap. I will use a half inch PVC pipe which I will measure and cut to the correct length. To attach the drip cap to the feed line, I will use a half inch male to slip adapter. Using this screw adapter configuration, I can remove the drip cap easily for cleaning without having to disassemble any of the parts of the towel. Now that the feed line has been cut to the correct length, a 5x5 five five inch fence cap will fit over the top. Moving on to the reservoir. This is the reservoir I created for my very first grow tower build. The round tub is a 20 gallon black pond liner that can be purchased from Lowe's or Home Depot for about $20. To make it white, I put two coats of primer and three coats of white spray paint over the outer surface. These pond liners make very good reservoirs because they are extremely strong, food grade safe, and they don't allow much light to pass through. The lid is held on by four stainless steel carriage bolts. In order to secure the tower post so that it doesn't fall over, you will need to secure a base to the bottom of the reservoir. For this, I used PVC board, which I bolted through the bottom of the reservoir and filled the holes with aquarium silicone. Here is the view from the bottom of the reservoir. Notice here that I coated the bottom of the bolt heads and washers with flex seal. This helps ensure that there would be no leaks in the future. Here is a look at how the tower locks into the base inside of the reservoir. One challenge with using a fish pond liner as a reservoir is finding a piece of sturdy plastic 30 inches wide to make a lid. My solution for the lid was to use a 30 by 32 inch washing machine drain pan that you can also get from Lowe's. Here is how the tower fits through the lid into the base of the reservoir. My recommendation today would be to use this 20 gallon Rubbermaid tote called The Brood. It can be purchased from Lowe's for about $20. It is food grade safe, UV protected, and has a very tight and strong lid that I doubt will ever crack. This is the same tote I use in my indoor grow system. Next, you will also need to cut a six inch porthole in your lid where you will fill your reservoir and add your nutrients. For the porthole cover, I use a six inch round irrigation valve box cover. You will have to trim a small portion of the underside of the cover to allow it to lock in place correctly. Last but not least, you will also need to purchase and install a fountain pump. I purchased this pump from Amazon for $23. To connect the pump to the irrigation feed line, I will use a half inch slip to male PVC adapter. Then I will push the irrigation feed line with the drip cap attached through the top of the tower. I will then connect the pump to the feed line with a small piece of half inch PVC pipe. Now I can place the tower on the top of the reservoir and insert the carriage bolts to keep it secure. This do-it-yourself grow tower is now ready to be moved outside where I can add my spring seedlings. One last thing I almost forgot. You will also need a timer to turn the pump on and off in 15 minute intervals. I'm using a digital timer I got from Amazon for $15. It is a separate cycle setting that allows me to quickly set up this type of timer configuration. But this digital timer is not made for outdoors, so I built a control box using a small plastic chlorine tablet box. This keeps the time from being exposed to the elements. Please be sure to see the description of this video for additional details on this build and feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.